Good evening and you're welcome. Now, the Secretary is just got a meeting at 5.40. Just very briefly. Firstly, I'd like to uh, welcome the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, to here to Government Buildings and thank her for attending at the OSCE meeting and for the engagements that she's had during the course of the day. I might say that as, as First Lady, as Senator, and as Secretary of State, she has shown an, an enormous sense of belief and conviction in politics and in the work that she has done, not only in the United States, not only in Ireland and Northern Ireland in particular, but now on a global stage as Secretary of State for the most powerful nation in the world. In that sense, we thank you very much and thank you for the all the work that you've done. I've had a, a wide-ranging discussion with the Secretary of State, which we covered issues about the Irish economy, our relationship with Europe, our forthcoming presidency, the opportunity to begin discussions with the United States on the, the context of uh, free trade between Europe and the US. I've also spoken to the Secretary in regard to our visit to Northern Ireland, her prompt condemnation of the murder of David Black recently, and her continued interest in keeping uh, peace, uh, the peace coordination, the funding for peace coordination, very much a central issue because of the fragility of a number of communities on either side of the peace divide. And we discussed elements of that. We also discussed the European issues. Uh, the situation facing the Eurozone, the European Union, the priorities for Ireland's presidency, we referred equally to issues uh, that the Secretary of State has been involved in recently, thanked her for her efforts in, in coordination with, uh, with Cairo and Egypt in bringing about a resolution to the recent, um, recent uh, difficulties between Palestine and Israel. We spoke about a number of uh, country issues in that region. And um, as I say, um, we're very glad to have you here. Uh, we thank you for your contribution to this country, for the unfailing commitment that you and President Clinton have shown to Ireland and this people. And we're extremely grateful to you for all those efforts. And we hope that you've had a, a pleasant visit and an enjoyable trip uh, to Belfast tomorrow when you go there. Thank you so much, Chief. And I, I just want to express. Um, my gratitude to, for your hospitality and also for uh, your government's hosting of the OSCE uh, meeting here and uh, congratulations as you assume the EU presidency and the responsibilities that go with that and also congratulations upon your election to the Human Rights Council where we will be uh, working together. Uh, I'm always happy to be in uh, uh, the Republic of Ireland and to have a chance to I see a lot of uh, my friends catch up on matters, and as the Taoiseach said, we covered a, a wide-ranging uh, number of issues of importance to us both, uh, as well as the global situation. And I, I want to applaud the Irish government under your leadership for making some very tough decisions to shore up uh, the Irish economy for the long term. Uh, the budget uh, passed yesterday meets the terms of the Troika program. It will keep Ireland on the path back to competitiveness in the European and global economies. And it's been uh, an extraordinary example of uh, Irish uh, resilience and determination, the way that you have uh, met uh, these challenges head on. It's good news, of course, uh, for you, but also for the European and global economy more broadly. Uh, Ireland has been a critical uh, leader and partner in the ongoing work toward reconciliation and peace building. Uh, and I'm looking forward to my uh, visit to Belfast uh, tomorrow uh, to see for myself uh, what the uh, uh, situation is. And I want to thank you for, uh, despite the difficult economic uh, challenges you face, your continuing engagement in regional and global uh, concerns. Uh, you've reaffirmed uh, OSC's core principles. Uh, you work tireless, tirelessly to uh, promote peace, combat intolerance, defend universal human rights and dignity. Uh, and of course, you're a great partner uh, with us as we work together on food security, uh, improving nutrition for pregnant women and children, uh, helping uh, women have access to clean cook stoves, uh, and in short, 
uh, trying to demonstrate uh, what our values really mean in practice. I also am happy to report the U.S.-Ireland Research and Development Partnership has made uh, progress to strengthen the ties uh, between our countries in research and development and the economy and technology. A delegation of American entrepreneurs visited Dublin and Belfast a few weeks ago to explore new investment opportunities in high-tech enterprises. So in short, uh, it's a pleasure as always being here and uh, I look forward to our continuing uh, work together in the future. Thank you, Secretary. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Clinton, David Davenport, our OPE Irish National Broadcasting. Uh, as the teacher uh, has said, there's a warm relationship, I think, between the Clintons and this country, and an interest in, in you personally. You'll be stepping down soon. Uh, what are your career plans? Would you rule out a tilt of the presidency in four years' time? And, and, and what would you think of suggestions to the media that uh, Bill Clinton might be on the first visit to the US and not here? Well, as to the first question, I'm right now too focused on what I'm doing to uh, complete all the work we have ahead of us before uh, I do step down. And I'm, I'm frankly looking forward uh, to uh, uh, returning uh, to living a life uh, that enjoys a lot of simple pleasures and uh, gives me time for family and friends and other pursuits. Uh, and I, I cannot comment on uh, uh, what uh, President Obama might uh, do in the second term. Uh, obviously, uh, it's his decision, but I, I would uh, uh, think that uh, my husband will be here uh, many times in the future uh, and doing the work that he's been doing uh, without having to uh, have the title of ambassador. Uh, Madam Secretary, um, since we understand that you are to see uh, Lakhtar Brahimi and uh, Sergei Lavrov, uh, today, can you say what you think this uh, three-person uh, meeting can accomplish? Whether it is an indication that the Russians have changed their calculation about Assad's staying power, and secondly, on Syria, there are new reports uh, of that what uh, sarin gas has been weaponized. Uh, is that true? And is it? part of the reason that there's been new urgency from you and President Obama about uh, Syrian uh, chemical weapons this week. Well, Anne, obviously I'm looking forward to the meeting, which uh, is supposed to start in 10 minutes. Um, and I, I want to uh, hear what uh, the special uh, envoy, uh, Lakhdar Brahimi, has to say to both Sergei Lavrov and myself. Uh, we have been trying hard to work with uh, Russia to stop the bloodshed in Syria and start a political transition. Uh, toward a post-Assad uh, Syrian future, and we very much uh, support what uh, Lakhdar Brahimi is trying to do. Um, events on the ground in Syria are accelerating, and we, we see that uh, in many uh, different ways. Uh, the pressure against the regime in and around Damascus uh, seems to be uh, increasing. Uh, we've made it very clear what our position is uh, uh, with respect to uh, chemical weapons, uh, and uh, I think we will discuss uh, that and many other aspects of what uh, needs to be done in order to end the violence and begin that transition that I referred to. So I'm looking forward to the meeting. I will obviously have more to say about it after uh, we hold it. You've been here many tough times over the last uh, 20 odd years now. You've been sure you showing up public finance. Do you have any message of hope that you can pass on to the Irish people about the short economic constraints that we're going through at the moment? And Peter, for you, as you know, uh, O'Neill always said, all public is local. Can I ask you about a domestic issue? Are you steadfast to believe that the government is not going to change its mind on any of the measures in the budget, in particular the right public care package? Well, let me just quickly uh, say that uh, you know, after years of economic uh, turmoil, we are delighted to see Ireland on the rebound. And uh, as I've said, the Taoiseach has taken a number of very tough, important steps <clears throat> that have placed Ireland on the right track. Uh, this has not been easy. I, I understand the real sacrifice and even suffering uh, that uh, many people have gone through because of the uh, economic uh, challenges. but. Uh, the, the, the view from uh, the United States is uh, the resilience, the hard work, uh, the determination of the Irish people. You know, getting up every day and getting the job done. Uh, coming at it with a practical, uh, can-do uh, spirit. 
uh, and an unwavering resolve to uh, meet uh, what lies ahead. Uh, the United States is confident uh, in our economic partnership uh, with Ireland. Our foreign direct investment uh, here already tops $191 billion, uh, which is more than U.S. companies have invested in Brazil, Russia, India, and China combined. So don't just take my word for it. Take our investors' actions and look at what they're doing, which is understanding that uh, investing in Ireland is a good bet for the future. More than 600 U.S. subsidiaries in Ireland employ more than 100,000 people, and these are in you know, good jobs in electronics manufacturing, medical supplies, pharmaceuticals, etc. Uh, and by comparison, Irish uh, companies employ 80,000 people. So uh, we, we know that these are tough times. We've had some of that ourselves. Uh, we have a different economic situation because of our currency and the like. Uh, and we've had to do some very difficult things. But our economy is turning around, and so is the Irish economy. Uh, but it's going to take some more time, and uh, we want to continue to uh, see our economic relationship grow. I'd like to thank the Secretary of State for a message of hope to the Irish people. I think this is something that the, that uh, as First Lady and as Senator and our Secretary of State, you and your husband have always given that clear message of courage and belief and conviction to the Irish people. And thank you for that. Uh, the budget yesterday uh, was, and it will be the toughest of this administration's uh, lifetime. None of the choices were easy. All of them were unpalatable. When you recall budgets of the 90s, which could have been done in 15 minutes, the question was not how much you could take in, but how much you could give out. And that's what landed us in the uh, unprecedented economic situation that we find ourselves in. The budgets got through yesterday, uh, if you know. It is the intention of the government to carry through the budget, uh, as put through the door yesterday. I might just say in conclusion that Ambassador Dan Mooney is not here, as you're aware. Uh, his daughter died in the United States, and I'd like to pay tribute to him, to his wife, and to her staff for their very generous commitment to this country and to express our sympathy and our condolences to him, his wife, and family on their very sad loss. And finally, Thank you. Uh, Madam Secretary, thank you. Um, I'll make it brief here. Uh, concerning Ambassador Rice, there has been a lot of criticism, a lot of attack coming from some Republicans in Congress uh, who accuse her of not having the necessary qualities that a secretary, a prospective secretary of state should have. Do you feel that this criticism, or how, how deeply do you feel that this criticism has wounded her? And should she be nominated, and it turns into a protracted battle in the, in the Senate, how long would you be willing to stay on? Well, first, Jill, let, let me repeat what I have said many times publicly and privately. Uh, Susan Rice has done a great job as our UN ambassador. Uh, she has been a stalwart colleague in a lot of the tough uh, decisions that uh, we've had to make, and certainly with respect to uh, defending our national interests and national security uh, at the United Nations. And she's played an important role in what we've been able to accomplish in the last four years. I worked very closely with her in shaping the sanctions on, on North Korea and Iran, and uh, she has uh, been uh, you know, on the uh, go uh, for us in every way uh, that was uh, required. Uh, and it's important to remember what Susan said was based on the information that had been given to every senior official. Uh, in our administration. And she made very clear in her appearances that the information was subject to change as more facts were gathered uh, and analyzed by the intelligence community. And look, as is often the case, our understanding evolved um, over time. Uh, and we've done our best to keep the American people and the Congress informed. Uh, that was her goal, that was her mission, and she should not be criticized for doing exactly that. Uh, and this decision about 
Uh, who succeeds me is totally up to the president, and of course I will support whatever he decides. And I've told him uh, that you know I I will certainly uh, do what I can to uh, help to expedite a transition, uh, but I'm not going to make any comment beyond that. Thank you all. Thank you very much.